drop down Smoking high, am I am not round I'm not round, no denying what I got now I got now, keep an eye out, keep it locked down Good day, good day people. So today we're on the Jaguar X-Type 2.2 uh, We're going to be do replacing the bottom ball joints, track rod ends, link rods and front brake pads uh, Normally I do these videos separately but customer wants the car done ASAP and it's raining outside so I need to get it done So I swing you around, let's get started So this is it Normally based on the Mondeo, everything's virtually the same as uh, I think the Mark 3 Mondeo. So I want to replace this bar here, track rod end here, and the bottom arm here, and the bottom board joint, and the front brake pads. So first things first, let's make sure all your bolts undo. I've already Break all my bolts off and that's just to make the job easier when I'm filming it so yeah so first things first is let's take this off here so we'll do the top one first top bolt on it uh, you need a 5mm allen key 15mm spanner uh, first thing I did was put a 15mm socket on on a breaker bar just to break it a bit just so I can undo it with a spanner so yeah 5mm allen key, 15mm spanner. Put your allen key in the end, spanner on, and just undo it. Uh, your bracket for your ABS wire is on there as well, so just be careful of your ABS wire. And the process for the bottom is exactly the same. Put your allen key in the end, 15mm, just unbolt them. So I'll get these unbolted and I'll be back. Right, so once you've done the nut on the end, uh, you can either leave it just just off on just the north and hit it with an hammer so it pops up. Uh, if that don't work, you're gonna need a ball joint remover. I've just got this old thing what's battered, and I'll just stick it in like that. Give it a couple of whacks with the hammer and it pops up. But normally hitting the nut and hitting it upwards does pop it off then just undo your nut off and it's off like that. So when it comes to your track rod in, uh, put your spanner on the end here. You just, you just see it here. You want to try and keep that straight up with your spanner. So you know that is the position. It, yeah, the steering rod here is going to stay. Then you want to Put yeah, adjustable on just your track rod end. Try and keep that bolt there as you just released it just enough so you know how to, where to wind the new one back up to. Uh, this one's a bit stiff, so I've had to put adjustable on here. Undo it so much, then it comes off by hand. So you can just undo it by hand. So, like I say, you got to try and keep the steering rod bit here straight. So you don't uh, knock off your tracking. So yeah, it's pretty simple really. We gotta do it. just remember, try not to turn this rod. Just turn the end. I say, hold your spanner straight. So you're holding this rod straight, so that don't move. And all you do is just twist off the end. Twist it all the way off. Once it's off, it's like that. So try and keep your spanner straight up so you know the position this in. So, once you've got the new one off, make sure you keep your shaft straight. Just wind back on your new one. On these cars, it don't matter left or right on these track rod ends so there's no need to check on other cars you'll find an L or an R on it so you know which side the car they go on but on these Jags X types 
they're both exactly the same. Yeah, so you want to just wind it all the way back up. You'll find when you get back to the nut like that, you'll find it don't actually go all the way around. So you want to just undo it slightly all the way back around, put it back into your own. Like that. Keep your shaft straight. Use your adjustables and just tighten that back nut. So there we go. And all you want to do, try and get your 15 mil back on. You want to put your new bolt back on at the bottom and tighten that up. I think the new bolts, the old ones are 15, the new ones are an 18. So, you're going to need an 18 mil. So it's an 18, you want to be a 17. Yep, 17 mil. Yeah, just tighten that up. Once you've got the bolts undone, at the back there, and at the bottom, this will swing round it here. Just push down the old lone hook, pull it round. You can use that back bolt at the back there. Right, this is a bit of a pain to get in. Uh, let's get a bit closer. As you can see, you've got the body of the car there. What you want to do is you want to try and twist it. And while you're doing that, try and pull the bolt at the same time. It will come. Trust me, it does come out. But it's just a bit of a pain. Like I say, you want to try and twist this bottom arm like that. So the bolt will come out this way. So, yeah, it's a lot of playing around, but it does come out. Right, like I say, it does take some playing around to get that back bolt out. You just got to keep wiggling this round, tilting it and that. Uh, I used a long knackered flat screwdriver and just kept tapping it on the head bolt up. Uh, it is tight against the body, but you need the bolt to come out this way. But it just come out, then that just drops out like that. There we go. Just going to take that knuckle bit off there, now I can get in with the Allen key properly. Like I say, if you ever struggle with these, you can use mole grips to hold it or just cut them off with a grinder or an axe or whatever to get them off. But because I'm taking this bottom arm off anyway, I just thought I'd drop the bottom arm off so I could get the Allen key in better to get it off. So yeah, let's get that off, then we'll put the bottom arm, new bottom arm back on. So, let's get the new one back on. Took that off now, that little ball bit off the end here, that's all off. Uh, yeah, so just got to put all back together. Right, you want to get the bolt in this side first. Get it in, get this at an angle, get your bolt in. As soon as it drops down, lift the bottom arm up, line that up. Make sure your bolt drops all the way through. Put your nut on the end, not tighten it up, just enough to hold it. Then you can line all this back in and put it back in and put all your other bolts and everything back in. So yeah, first things first, let's get the long bolt back in this side. Just so we know we're not going to struggle trying to get it in. So drop it in, lift this bottom arm up so it drops through the bottom hole and put, just put the nut on, a few threads, just to hold it in. So that's that jacked, as you can see. It's about 
what it will be when it's sat on the road. So all we'll do now is tighten that back nut and bolt up and that front one there. So I'll get them tightened up. So that's all bolted up, tightened up, torqued up, whatever. It's all done. Next thing is we'll do this drop link here. Right, as you can see with these new ones here, on the end, we've got flat marks here. 17mm spanner will hold the back here while you tighten it up, or you can use an Allen key. Go on, zoom in. Use an Allen key, either one. Uh, I find Allen key best because when you tighten so far up on the spanner, it traps your spanner behind. So, yeah. I use Allen key, just tighten them up, so we'll get that on the corner. So, what we're going to do is, you want to tuck it, put it in the bottom, and into the top, try and do this on camera, while getting in the way. So, Get it in the bottom, get it in the top. Don't forget to put your ABS sensor bracket back on. Just put your bolt on. Just do it finger tight. Same with the bottom. Get the bottom on, do it finger tight, then get it tightened up. So there we go. That's bottom arm, track rod end, link rod, all done, all tightened up. Uh, to do, I say all three of this, if you've never done it before, set yourself a day to do it. Uh, to do all these, both sides, I think it's taught me, I don't know, four or five hour. Uh, yeah, but each one, different times but like I say if you set yourself off a day to do the bottom arm and a day to do them all three but if you are going to do the bottom arm you might as well do the track rod and the link rod at the same time uh, the customer uh, said when he was driving along felt like his front end was swaying that was because of the bottom board joint here down here was absolutely knackered uh, let me show you Look at that, all the gaiters gone and everything, all loose, uh, the back rubber's knackered as well, so when you're driving along your wheels like that, uh, track rod end was knackered as well, so yeah that's where his swaying was coming, that was both sides, so when driving along and you feel like your wheels are swaying, your steering swaying, that's normally your problem there. So that should tighten everything back up when you're steering and that. After you've done this kind of work, it is best to have your, your tracking done and that. But like I say, if you keep that shaft straight as possible while you're taking this track rod end off and that, you virtually get it bang on to how it was before. But because you put all new on and that, I would advise having your tracking done. But it's totally up to you, see how it dries, see how it feels and that. Right, so the next thing is I'm going to do these front brake pads. Uh, so that's done. Time for the front brake pads. What you need a 13mm spanner. So let's grab a 13mm. Oh, I see, with the screwdriver, you've got to get so far back. As you see, you've got to be dead careful you don't actually damage your piston. But if you're careful enough, you can actually get it squeezed back. Uh, it'll just take the top layer of rust off, if anything. But it won't go completely back. So, what you want to do is either use the G-clamp to push it back, but I'll just use these. Just clamp it on, just squeeze it back far enough. So yeah, we'll do that. So there we go, that's the piston back. I say all, all I've used is these, open them up and just squeeze them in. Just be careful you don't damage the piston. But that's that done, so next is pads. So when it comes to your pads, use your old ones, all you want to do is pull them off. 
Yeah, got a bit of flat screwdriver. Stick them on, just pull your pads off like that. There's one. And there's two. So, get the new ones. There's the new ones right here. Where are you? So, what's do is the oval bit goes around the oval of your disc, obviously. And you want to push the bottom in, come to the top, push down, and push in. Make sure the push right in and do exactly the same with the back. So yeah, just push it in. So once you're pushed in like that, all clicked in, just put your caliper back on. So if your piston's back far enough, it should go on nicely. Should fit round your new pads like that. Make sure you squeeze these in so your caliper sits behind it. Same with the bottom. So there we go. And just bolt them back up. So once you've got it all bolted back up, that's your front brake pads done. Quick simple job front brake pads on these jacks. Uh, go back to your reservoir. Make sure it's not going to be a max mark. See, that is absolutely full. I've got to drain some out of that. Uh, use anything just to try and get some of it out and back down to the max mark. You don't want to leave it full like that because you need some room in there. So when you pressure brake, it expands and does what it does. So you definitely need to take some out. So we'll get some out of that now. So yeah. Get some out of it. I use just blue roll, just keep soaking it up. Uh, use anything really, just make sure you don't drop out in there. And that uh, you'll find your max mark on the side here, so make sure it's no higher than that. Uh, if your brakes are really stiff, always check your reservoir, make sure it ain't over full because that will make your brakes really stiff. Uh, if it feels like your brake pads slowly going down too far, you either got air in your system or a leak. So yeah, just make sure it's not above the max. So you've done that. Don't forget to put your cap back on. So that's that done. Go back into your car and just pump your brakes. Just so it brings your piston. So there we go, that's the bottom arms done, wishbones, whatever you want to call it, tri rod ends, link rods, all done, front brake pads, done. So, that's that done, uh, as you've seen, I've still got the intake to do, easy oil valve, just waiting for the gaskets to turn up for that, uh, there will be a video coming out on that, either before this one or after, all depends. Uh, and a service so I'm going to do the service now film that that will probably come up after this but yeah if you need any help drop us a comment down below we'll try and help you out as much as possible uh, please hit that like button anyway I'll leave it there see you next time stay safe